So my friend was updating her kitchen. Involved, you no, know, redoing the kitchen cabinets, painting the walls. And so she decided that she wanted to put a tile backsplash. And she called me to help her out. So to make this job simple, we used a pre-mixed mortar. And then we also dry fit all the tile. That way we were able to make good cuts and make sure everything fit properly. Which is a lot better than what happened on my wall. You can check that video out, I'll put a link for it. So here you can see we're dry fitting everything, we use blue tape. Then once we get to a spot, we go ahead and mark and make all the cuts. She wanted to, she was there when I did my tile, so she saw how I did it. And she wanted to take this on more herself and just have me there for help. Which, less work for me, better is. So you can see next to her is a pile of pre-cut tiles and regular tiles. That's because we dry fit basically the whole wall. Lined up the pattern she wanted, dry fit it all, and then did the cuts. That made things go a lot smoother. And believe it or not, it actually went a lot quicker. That way we didn't have to try to like stop and then make cuts and then try to start back up. By having everything pre-cut and basically have the pattern laid out, the job was much, much quicker, much smoother. Now she was having a problem with you know, getting mortar on the tiles. And it was her first time tiling, so she was... You know, taking her time, make sure she got everything right. Here she's putting spacers in, and she's gonna go ahead and start putting in another piece of tile. Again, this is her first time, it's only my second time, but when you see the finished result, you see the advantage of taking your time and make sure everything is precise. Whereas when I tiled my kitchen, I was kind of in a hurry. I was just trying to figure it out how to do it. I had a bunch of crooked and misspaced tiles. So in the next clip, you'll see behind the stove, you see the real small cuts up at the top. Yeah, the only way to really make cuts that small is to use a wet saw. Try using a regular tile cutter, and it just kept breaking tiles. So here, I've turned on my wet saw. Now, the thing about using a wet saw is you go real slow. Let the blade do all the work. Don't try to push it through there quickly, because what happens is that as it get towards the end, it'll take a chip off, and then the cut is ruined. So you want to push it through real nice and slow. Now this is a very messy tool. It sprays water everywhere. As you see by the paper towel behind it, eventually you end up putting a towel underneath it. And you also have to keep dumping it and adding water because you want to keep the blade cool, which is what the water is for. And as you cut this and it's throwing water, you end up losing water. So then without the water there to keep the blade cool, you don't get good cuts. So you see I had a pile of towel next to me. I already made a bunch of half cuts. Because you know you got to get half cuts out of the full towel there. And then now I'm cutting the trim pieces for the top. So that all those cuts are already pre-made. Again, by doing this, it actually kind of spread up the process of putting the towel on the wall. Now, one other thing I recommend is wearing gloves when using a saw. What's happening is as I was making the cuts, eventually I started to get little shards of a uh, the towel in my fingers, and then I ended up getting a cut by one of the shards. It was, it was not fun. So later on, I had on rubber gloves as I was doing this, keep the water off my hands, and to keep the towel from leaving little shards inside my fingers. But again, when you do this, you go nice and slow. Let the saw blade do all the work, and you'll be fine. So as you can see next to her, again, is a pile. There's a towel of, I'm sorry, it's a pile of cut towel. And then she's just going ahead and putting mortar on the wall and then spreading it with the big trowel, putting the grooves in, and then she starts putting type pieces of the tile up. You can do it like that, or like I did, I put a bunch of mortar on the wall and I pretty much wet as much of the wall as I could as so I put as many pieces of tile up as I can at one time. Now for the grout, we also use a pre-mixed grout because again, we want to make this job simple and quick. But again, we're about trying to mix the grout and get it to the right texture. Pre-mix is always going to be the quickest and easiest to go. Now with the grout, I found it best to actually scoop the grout out and put the grout onto, oh man, this one crooked towel. I won't tell if you won't. This is behind the fridge anyway, you won't be able to see it. But what I did was I took the grout, I put the grout onto my um, float, and then I went ahead and spread the grout across. Now, it's messy. You will end up having grout fall as you do it. You want to push this at 45 degree angles, not straight into the grooves or straight across the grooves because you will miss. 
stuff would just fall out and you have a bunch of spaces. So you want to push at 45 degree angles to the grooves. Press in as hard as you can and then keep adding grout and go. And go. You see how you get the little spots there? So that means you got to put more grout on, the, on your float and keep pressing in. You see also taking the trowel and I'm scraping the grout on the back of the float towards the pile in the front. And then just keep spreading your grout. Grout is messy. It's going to fall everywhere. So just be ready to clean it up. It cleans up like sand. It's very easy to clean up. You don't need water or anything of that nature. Let it go ahead and fall. You could grab a broom and dustpan and sweep it about the floor. Or if it's on your countertop, a little brush and dustpan will sweep all that up also. It's very easy to clean up. Now, as you're doing this, you want to come behind with your damp sponge. Not wet sponge, but damp sponge to get the grout off the face of the tile. Again, if you want more detail in how to do this, you can check out my other video, which I put a link to. And you can see the exact process of grouting the tile. This is just a quick video to help someone out who's doing subway tile. You can see the outlet right there. I put tape over the face of the outlet to make sure we don't get any grout or mud into the outlet. Mainly so we don't get electrocuted, but also because you don't want to plug the outlet up and have it not be able to be used. And you can also see the real small cut there. It's just so that you're able to keep the look of the flow of your tile when the light, um, outlet cover goes on. Otherwise, the lines will be off and it'll, it'll look bad. So make a small cut and you line it up with a piece of tile, one above the one that's directly above it, if that made sense. So not the big one, but look above and those two grout lines should line up. Now here you see her doing ahead and doing the rest of the grout around the kitchen. Yes, yeah, she wanted to put more hands on in this job, which is perfectly fine by me. So here, after the grout has dried, which takes about two hours, you're gonna take a damp, I like to use microfiber cloth, and you basically just clean the grout off the face of the tile. You can also clean up some of the grout lines because sometimes the grout hangs over some. So you go ahead and clean your grout lines up. Microfiber, I think, is the best towel, um, best towel to use. And once you do that, you take a dry microfiber cloth and wipe it down. The way you can tell it's done is, see right there, I still have grout on my finger. Yeah, that towel needs to be wiped. So any towel you wipe, if you come by the dry one, you just wipe your finger across, you don't get any grout off, or you don't feel any powder, you know it's done and it's polished. And that's basically it for this job. It's, it's not very difficult, it is time consuming. The mortar has to dry at least overnight. I recommend 12 hours to make sure it's secure. The grout could take up to two hours to dry, depends on the type of grout you use. The pre-mix dries in two hours, I know that. And then it's just cutting and going. All along, I say it took about an hour, maybe an hour and a half to actually put the tile up onto the wall. And maybe closer to two hours and count all the cuts that were made. And then maybe a good hour to grout it all. And then another 45 minutes or so to clean it. And you end up with this finished product here. Now, if you want to see, again, more detail how to do this, you can check out my other video. I also have a cool video about that microwave above the, above the stove. And thanks for checking it out. Looking forward to our next project. Have no clue what it is yet.